the previous chi-squared test video, we talked about just having one categorical variable. And now we're going to talk about having two categorical variables. And we're wondering, is there some kind of association or dependence or relationship between these two categorical variables? So that's the big research question we're trying to answer. So for example, maybe our two categorical variables are whether a student smoked and whether their parents smoked. So our data could look like this. Here's our contingency table. We have two options. The student could either smoke or not smoke. So we have two columns here. And then we have three options for the parents. We could have both parents smoking, one of the parents smoking, or neither of the parents smoking. So those are the three rows there. So there's our data. And then we could find the row totals and the column totals. So for example, here in this data set, 17, 80 of these um, students have both of their parents smoking. And then also in this data, we have 1,004 students who smoke and uh, 4,371 students who do not smoke. So we could add up all these row and column totals to see that our total number of students that we have surveyed in this data set is 5,375. All right, so here we have the observed count, and then we can go ahead and actually do our test to see whether or not there is an association between whether students smoked and whether their parents smoked. All right, so the null hypothesis is going to be there is no association, and then the alternative is there is an association. So this is the general way that you'll frame your null and alternative hypotheses. So in this example, we would word it like this. The null is whether a student smokes and whether their parents smoke are unrelated. And then the alternative is there is a relationship between whether a student smoked and whether their parents smoked. All right, so we know that we're going to be doing this chi-squared test, this chi-squared test of association. And so you can probably guess that the test stat is going to look pretty similar to the previous video's test stat. So we're going to need expected cell count. So we have our observed cell counts here. Now we need some way to get our expected cell count. And again, by expected cell count, we mean under the null hypothesis, what is the expectation, like the probabilistic expected cell count. All right, so that's going to be our row total times our column total divided by the totals in our data set. So for example, if we want to know what is the expected cell count for this particular cell, that is the student smokes and both of their parents smoke, we would take this cell, this cell's row total and this cell's column total, multiply, multiply them by each other, and then divide by the total sample size. So we'd have 1780 times 1004 divided by 5375. And so that would be the expected cell count for this first cell under the null hypothesis that there's no association between whether students smoked and whether their parents smoked. All right, so now we know how to get our expected cell counts based off our observed cell counts. So now we can go ahead and calculate our test stat. So our test stat is still going to be observed minus expected squared divided by expected, and then add those all up. So here we have six of these cells. So we're going to be adding up six things. So we'd have observed minus the expected cell count, 1780 times 1004 divided by 5375 squared divided by, again, this expected number and that would be the component for that first cell. Then we would do the same thing for this cell, and this cell, this cell, this cell, this cell, add those all up to get our test statistic. All right, so we have our test stat. Now we need to know what is the sampling distribution for that test stat under the null hypothesis. So just like in our um, previous video, we're going to have a chi-squared distribution, and we're going to base the degrees of freedom off of the number of categories over there. All right, so in our previous video, we just had one um, categorical variable, and so we just said take the number of categories and subtract one, and that's the number of degrees of freedom. What we're going to do here is take the number of rows, minus one, times the number of columns, minus one, and that's our degrees of freedom. So in this example, we have three rows and two columns, so we would have two degrees of freedom in this example here. All right, so we have 
our test set, our sampling distrib distributions for that test set under a vanilla hypothesis. And then just like in the previous video, our p-value is going to be the area under the curve above that test set. So here's our chi-squared distribution with however many degrees of freedom that we've decided. We have the test set, and then that upper area is our p-value. So the probability that a chi-squared distribution with that many degrees of freedom is greater than our test at x squared.